Here's how you can master the camera app on iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus. Let's start our tour of the iPhone 14 camera app by talking about the controls of the camera. After launching the app, you can go ahead and tap the shutter to take a photo, but there's also a better way. You can use the volume buttons located on the side of the phone. If you press either of them right now, by default, it'll go ahead and capture a photo. If you hold either of those buttons, it will start to record a video, as you can tell by the changed shutter icon down at the bottom and the incrementing timer at the top of the screen. Once you let go, that photo will stop, or that video rather, will stop recording. If we go and head into the settings application under camera, we also have an additional setting we can change. We can use the volume up button for burst photos. With this enabled, now I can press the bottom one to take a photo, press the top to take a photo, hold the bottom to start recording video, or hold the top one to start capturing burst photos, and it will show a counter at the bottom of the screen. As I mentioned, the shutter button down below makes it easy to take a photo. But Apple has also introduced a feature in recent years called Quick Take. This allows you to quickly take different types of photos with that single button. For example, if I tap and hold it, just like with the volume buttons, it can start recording a video. And when I release, the video will stop recording. If I tap and hold to start recording a video and drag that icon to the right, it'll now lock it inside of video mode. The timer is continuing and the shutter button has turned into a stop button to stop recording. While filming a video, I can also tap on this button to step to capture a still frame from that video. Let's go ahead and stop this. The other alt option is while holding the button, I can immediately drag to the left. And in this case, I'm capturing burst photos instead. So tap for a single photo, tap and hold to record video, tap, hold, drag to the right to lock into video, or tap and drag to the left to record burst photos. iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus each have two cameras, an ultra wide angle lens and a wide angle lens. Those are represented by the 0.5 and one times zoom here at the bottom of the screen. I can move between them by just tapping, so 0.5 to 1, to move interchangeably between the two cameras. Anytime I can also zoom in by pinching on the screen, just like that, zoom in and zoom out. But sometimes that's not always convenient, and you'd rather just have some other physical controls than trying to pinch and move on a screen while trying to capture a photo. So a way to get around this is by using the scope wheel. I can tap and hold and drag left and right to change my perspective of the photo. And you can see when it's moving and switching between those two lenses. So here I am on the ultra wide, which will even be represented with the millimeter equivalent down below. Then one time zoom, and I can go all the way up to five times digital zoom. Going back to one, whatever you want to lock this in at, so we want to zoom out a little bit. When you're done, you can wait and the wheel will automatically vanish. Or when you go ahead and lock it in, you can just pull down and dismiss it that way. Hey, before we get too far into this, I have to thank my sponsor for this video and one of my all-time favorite case manufacturers for years, Alto. Alto has an entire lineup of incredible leather cases for all of Apple's latest iPhones. All of Alto's cases use incredibly high quality Italian aniline dyed leathers that fit your iPhone like a glove and frankly feel like they have better leather quality than Apple's own cases. Some cases have built-in pockets on the back perfect for storing your cards. You can store several cards in the back of your iPhone case and always have them with you without having to worry about a detachable wallet or an external wallet to bring along for the ride. If you'd prefer a smooth back case, don't worry, Alto now supports MagSafe, a big addition over their iPhone 13 cases that did not have MagSafe. I am so excited that MagSafe is now built in. It's just one of many little touches that stand Alto's cases apart from the rest. I also love the metal accents on the side. They use anodized aluminum buttons the same way Apple does with their cases. They fit your iPhone so well, protect all of the sides. There's a raised edge around the camera bump. Alto's cases come in several different styles, including plain back, MagSafe support, the pocket, as well as a lanyard version. If you want to check out any of these, visit Alto's website it is linked down below in the description. Thank you again to Alto for sponsoring this video.
At any given time in the camera app, you might see different controls here along the top. And these can change based on what you're actively doing. So right now, you can see I have an option for the flash, which you can choose between on, auto, or off. Then we have the night mode icon. It's a bit dark here behind the phone. So I do have a night mode toggle there that I can choose to enable or disable as I prefer. Then on the right, we have these concentric circles, which represents live photos. I always recommend keeping live photos on. They don't take up that much more space and you can really make sure you get the perfect frame and more relive your memories as your photos animate. So we can go ahead and leave that on. But there are other controls too. If you tap on this little carrot at the top, a tray will appear at the bottom. Here you can see all of the different options that you have. So again, flash, and you can see auto, on, or off. We'll go ahead and leave it off. There's the night mode option. Depending on the stability of your camera and how dark it is, you might have a control here. So I can control do one second, leave it on auto, or I can go ahead and turn it off. If you have this on a tripod and it's very dark, this can get up to 30 seconds of exposure for night mode photography. Then we have, again, live photos that we saw before. We have photographic styles. These can be customized to your liking to change the look of a photo. We have the rich contrast, vibrant, warm, and cool options available. Any of these that you like, you can also tinker with down below. Make some changes, and then if you want, you can always tap on the reset button to go back to the factory defaults. But when you do change these, they'll be locked in and kind of represent your signature style every time you take those photos. Go back to the basic. We can choose our aspect ratio, 4-3, kind of standard photography. Square, great for social media. Or we can go and do 16-9. Right now it's 9 by 16. But if we would turn the phone horizontally, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, kind of that widescreen format. So those are your different aspect ratios you can choose from. Then we have the exposure compensation, lighten or darken the photo as you take it. And then we have timer and filters. Filters can be applied afterward. However, photographic styles are applied at the time of capture. For photos, you have the option between photo, portrait that can blur the background of your photo, creating a portrait-like effect, and panorama. If we move to the left, we can move into video modes. There's video, cinematic, slow-mo, and time-lapse. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these. Cinematic video has been upgraded with the iPhone 14. If you look here at the top, you can change between HD and now 4K. And 4K can be shot at both 30 and 24 frames per second. While in cinematic mode, you can adjust the F value, the aperture, which is how much blur there will be in that video. And you can even adjust this after the fact when editing. If we go to video mode, we also have another new addition, which is action mode. Action mode can be toggled on with that little running man icon and you'll see an alert appear at the top of the screen. So I'll go ahead and enable it. So here we are in action mode and it does tell me that there's more light required. Action mode does need a good amount of light to be able to capture a good stabilized video. And it can shoot in various formats up to 2.8K, which is just below 4K in terms of resolution. Action mode does a great job at stabilizing footage. So you're running around, chasing your kids, anything like that as you're moving, it can all be very stable thanks to action mode. Kind of like using a gimbal without needing an external gimbal. I do want to mention one setting that you may want to take a look at. If we move back here into the settings application, there is an option under record video for lower light. When this is enabled, it will reduce the amount of stabilization that is applied, but it can allow you to capture footage in lower light settings. If you are in those settings and you do need some stabilization, this still can be an option, even if it isn't as powerful with more light. So that covers it. That is the camera app on the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments or find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have a lot more videos on iPhone 14 coming your way.